Yeah. There we go. Roll program. Neil Armstrong. Lift off on Apollo 11. When you ponder the space race of the mid 20th century, you probably think of the US and the Soviets, Armstrong and Gagarin, Apollo and Soyuz, and you probably don't consider Britain at all. But actually, you'd be wrong. And Derek and Mike are living proof of it. Hello, Hello how do you do? Derek. Hello. <laughs> Stemming from the need for a missile programme in the wake of the Second World War, the Black Arrow rocket was developed, sending satellites into space. Originally built on the Isle of Wight, its final flight in Australia was the first and only successful orbital launch to be conducted by the United Kingdom. Rocket men Derek and Mike worked on the Black Arrow programme and they're on a mission to Scotland as after 48 years, a crucial part of it is returning to these shores. I mean, the last time I set eyes on it was uh, when it left the Isle of Wight in 1971. I'm sure that every launch is tense, but was this particularly tense given that there had been two failed attempts? I saw it on the launch pad. It just gently lifted our three away. So, as far as I was concerned, it, it, it had worked. She went like a bird, you know. And I'm afraid most people didn't stop drinking till about four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> when the Black Arrow rocket crashed down in 1971, our burgeoning space programme came to a halt. But now, the British space industry is rising from those ashes. Do you think people would be surprised to learn just how well the UK space industry is faring? We've been growing very well. It's actually tripled in size since 2000. It's worth around 14 billion to the UK economy as a whole. On the Black Arrow, engineers added concentrated hair bleach, hydrogen peroxide, to supercharge the fuel, which allowed the rocket to be smaller and more efficient. Why are the British space industry looking to the past technologies that were abandoned? We're using the same type of rocket propellants that Black Arrow used. Uh, it gives us a, a whole range of advantages, particularly in their uh, efficiency. Our interest mostly is in its inspiration value for science and education learning and also in ensuring this, this important space artefact is, is not gradually lost to the environment. Engineers Mike and Derek finally get to have a close-up look at their old rocket. Bigger Good. than you were expecting? Good grief, yeah. <laughs> I really didn't expect to see that much. It's like seeing an old friend. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice way of putting it. You... I spent the night with it once. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your wife knows. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I had ten weeks non-stop work on it, not a day off. So that was all peroxide inside there. How many litres do you remember? No. <laughs> That's putting you on the spot. It was full. <laughs> it was full, and the top part was filled with uh, kerosene. And this is kerosene, yeah. Yep. Unfortunately, back in 1971, with electronics being bulkier than today, the rocket had limited capabilities on what it could carry. And with plenty of international competition, it was scrapped after only two years of service. And if you were to look back on your career, would it be the Black Arrow that were the highlight? We've both worked on other programmes since, yeah. but uh, nothing quite equals this, I don't think. Oh, it was a team effort, wasn't it? It was, yes. it was yeah. fantastic. Are you proud to review the British space industry and to see where it is today? Yes, yes. It, at long last, we have a space agency, and now that space agency is starting to lay down a plan to keep UK in the space business. For you, what sort of lasting legacy does the Black Arrow represent? When it went out the door, it really meant something. Everybody personally knew every nut and bolt in it, and, and I would be very proud to have been part of it. Ah, thanks, Natasha. You love a bit of space.